Good evening and welcome to the hashtag. This week's news, somebody died on the road today. Doesn't really matter when you actually watch this video because it seems that somebody dies on the road every single day. If you ask me, the stats are out of this world. In order to fix the problem, the government has suggested that we drop the speed limit to just 40 k's across the entire CBD. If you ask me, the government are out of their freaking minds. Keep in mind this is the same government that expect us to continue to pay to use the toll roads even when they're doing roadworks and it takes twice as long. That's right, you're already paying extra for petrol, it takes you extra time, and you're actually also paying the salaries of the people who are doing the roadworks. But you better be prepared to pay that road toll as well, because you, my friend, have had the privilege of being delayed on CityLink. The limit's already been taken down to 40 k's in school zones, which I think is a great idea. They should be applauded for doing that. In fact, I did applaud. I saw the sign, I got out of my car, and I applauded for five straight minutes. At least that's what I tell people I was doing. In reality, I actually needed a solid five minutes in order to decipher the freaking sign in order to determine what speed I was allowed to be travelling at that time of day. I got a parking fine once, in the city. See, I read the sign and I thought it was a legal zone, a legal two hour zone between the hours of four and six on a non-school night that wasn't a Tuesday or Thursday in the absence of buses or taxis because it was a strike day with the parking meter on a 45 degree angle. However, it turns out that it wasn't legal because on a non-school night Wednesday between the hours of 4 and 6, it's a loading zone in the absence of buses or taxis on a non-strike day. The parking meters have sensors underground with a 15 minute limit in peak hours unless the sign's been covered by a black garbage bag, only it turns out it was a clear way so all the other information on the sign was completely irrelevant anyway. When parking in the city, we're expected to be able to decipher these pseudocoos within 30 seconds which seems unreasonable given that the pseudocoos in the paper are supposed to take us 15 minutes in order to achieve genius status. 40 k's is a good idea in school zones. School children can be unpredictable, some of them don't know any better, and we as adults have to watch out for them. But in the city we're not talking about school children, we're talking about grown adults who know how to take care of themselves, who know how dangerous crossing the road can be, and who are apparently smart enough to have gotten a big shot job in the city in the first place. I'm sorry, but it comes to a point where it's no longer the driver's fault. We can lower the speed limit to 20 k's if we want to, but as long as these clowns are continuing to step out onto the road without looking, people are eventually going to get killed regardless. Perhaps instead of lowering the speed limit further and angering everyone, perhaps it would be a much better use of the taxpayers' money to launch a nationwide campaign in order to educate some of these super duper hotshot whiz bang intelligent workers in the city on how to cross the road safely. Get a smiley representative in a bright coloured van to drive around to all the offices of the doctors, accountants and lawyers and teach them to look right, look left and look right again and if you're playing foursquare with your friends and your tennis ball rolls out onto the road, don't chase after it because you might get hit by one of the boom boom cars, yeah? Don't know why I put a British accent on then, though I do believe it made the joke funnier. Honestly, we just have to have faith that these adults are going to be responsible and are going to be able to take care of themselves. Roads and cars can be dangerous. I mean, what next? Are we going to have to stop selling sharp knives because ignorant people are likely to cut themselves on them? I've argued this point before to people, standing up for the rights of drivers everywhere and blaming the pedestrians, and people have gotten upset. They've said, Ash, we have to consider the entire equation. Take the pedestrians out for a moment. I said, well, that's a little bit confusing. Last week I took out four pedestrians and you got upset with me. Make up your mind, pedestrians. OK, look, I'll be fair. We all have to do what we can in order to lower the road toll. But at 50 k's, I don't think it's excessive speed limit in the CBD that's the problem. In fact, in the CBD, I challenge you to even make it up to 50 k's because it's impossible to drive for 10 friggin' metres without coming across bumper-to-bumper -bumper traffic or another friggin' red light. The people in the government would know this, but they don't do any driving in the CBD, do they? They're much too busy sitting in the back seat of their cushy limos, drinking champagne, Campaign, not listening to a word I'm saying and discussing which part of Hawaii they should go to for their next business trip which you and I are paying for. Oh, I need to go to maintain communication with uh, research of the beaches with my whole family and a bar tab. I digress. People don't get killed because the increasingly small speed limits are still too high. People get killed when individuals do stupid things. For example, if a drunk driver, drugged out of his mind at 70 k's over the limit, speeds through and hits someone and kills them in the process, that doesn't mean that 50 k's per hour is too high. That means that 120 in a 50 zone is too high. And maybe the government should start to blame the road toll on dickheads like that, rather than blaming the other 99% of drivers who are travelling at 50 or less and who aren't killing very many people at all. So the the question is, how do we stop people from doing stupid things? How do you stop people from speeding? Well, ad campaigns haven't worked because, as we've already established, human beings can't be trusted to be responsible with dangerous equipment. So, what do we do? We make the equipment less dangerous. 
Perhaps you can have speedos that tell you you're going 10 k's faster than you actually are. Perhaps every car can be installed with an electronic device that immediately reports you to the police if you break the speed limit. Or maybe, oh, mm, here's a thought, stop manufacturing cars that are capable of travelling 260 kilometres per hour, a speed which is practical for no reason other than killing innocent people on the roads and speeding for the sake of it, you idiots. And so in response to the government's proposal to drop the speed limit in the CBD, I say this. Hey government, if you really want to do something to help, let's not be stupid here. After all, who's more stupid? The drinking, drugged up, speeding drivers who are continually re-offending, or the government that are continually reissuing these people with their driver's licences three months later? Hmm, change the law on that one and I guarantee the road toll will fall faster than Julia Gillard's popularity. My name's Ashley McPherson. Cheerio, only a little bit over, you bloody idiot.